Welcome to my review and thoughts on the 2023 movie, Clock. So, let us dive right in, and yeah, uh, I'm going to start by telling you this was a movie that I absolutely loved. This movie will have some jokes, none at the expense of minorities. And I will get into some serious topics. I realize this video is long. I'm going to do what I can to make it worth your time. And yeah, I start the video with a review where if I spoil anything, I'll verbally warn before I do so. Hold up an index finger until I'm done with the spoiler so you can mute and skip ahead and you see me lower my index finger. As soon as I end the review itself, please note the video. The rest of the video will have lots of spoilers, including discussing the ending. So the movie. Does it really not have a rating? Hmm. Okay, well, I would definitely say it makes sense for it to be R-rated. It definitely doesn't make sense for it to have less any lower age rating. There's some intense horror elements in this, and also some strong language. Uh, I might also swear in this video for those who either do not want or do want that. And let's see, that brings us to... Yeah, so I've watched this once, and I just got done watching it before I hit record. And yeah, so the plot, I'm going to be quoting the IMDb one. A woman enrolls in a clinical trial to try and fix her seemingly broken biological clock after friends, family, and society pressures her to have children. And that... Right. Um, this is on Disney Plus in, in some countries. I'm not sure I've seen it for this particular one, but for some other things that were like... R rated and such. I've seen people say, you know, ex express confusion at it being on Disney Plus. Please keep in mind, it is behind the age lock, which means that if you are in a place where it is possible that children or teenagers will try to watch something on Disney Plus, you can password protect this and anything else above a certain age rating. The same thing goes for, for example, the Netflix Marvel shows, which are for adults, even though most of what Disney has made that's MCU is for teenagers. So this was written and directed by Alexis Jacknow, and I. This is the only thing of hers that I'm familiar with. She, you know, she's she's acted in more than she's written and directed so far, but that's you know you got to get your foot in the door. Doesn't mean that no, she she is a very serious writer and director. And the yeah the 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 writing there's perhaps one or two things that are overused, but by and large, it this is very well written, and it's certainly I really appreciate how intelligent horror movies are now. Like I remember you know, 90s, the 80s did have some intelligent ones, but there were a lot of crappy horror movies in the 90s and also early 2000s and also 2010s. Today we're getting really, really intelligent, complex ones, and I really appreciate that. The, the various characters are, you know, some of them appear to at first be very one-note, but over the course of the movie you realize they're more complex, and I think that pretty well covers what I have to say about the writing. It handles plot twists well. Um, there's there's not too many. I know that some people think at least one of them are bad. I don't really agree. I think an argument could be made that at least one of them is easy to figure out for the viewer, but honestly there was not very much time between the thing happening that you can maybe figure out, oh, that's not actually, no, there's something else going on here, 
and the reveal of what actually happened, which was very smart. So, yeah. Um, let's see. Yeah, so Wikipedia describes the movie as an American science fiction horror film written and directed by Alexis Jacknow in her feature-length debut based on her 2020 short of the same name. The short film is also worth watching. It's free right here on YouTube. Now, some people take issue with the fact that the movie brings up Jewish issues. She is Jewish in real life. This is very much... Like, I think some of the people who were confused by it, like, it is very much... It is the... the it's very much the stuff that a... You know, a, a Jewish woman of... You know, the, the protagonist is also a Jewish woman, Ella. She's 37, you know, approaching, um, yeah, and, and they talk about, you know, oh, by that standard, you're practically geriatric, you know, for, for as far as having kids go. I haven't been able to find, okay, I'm going to make one more try to find, how old is Alexis Jack now? And, yeah, just does not say, which, you know, maybe she doesn't want people to know. I 100% respect that. But if I had to guess, I'm thinking, you know, approaching that age. So this is, you know, she's thinking a lot about this. And that's, she's not alone in women around that age thinking a lot about that. But a lot of them aren't listened to, and I really appreciate that she was able to make a movie out of these anxieties. And it's a little frustrating that so many people seemed unwilling to engage with it on, you know, any kind of deep level. They, they just, yeah. Um, as far as horror movies go, it is one of those, like, it features some, some body horror that's, you know, it's not David Cronenberg intense, but it's not not intense at all either. And um, some people really did not like the symbolism. I mean, I think an argument could be made. Maybe there's a little too much egg symbolism. Uh, you know, when I read a reviewer saying, oh, you know, oh, she sure eats a lot of eggs. I was like, who cares? But no, I just... I think I would have maybe trimmed out one or two of them. But, like, the metaphors, you know, there's stuff that, like, needs explaining, but the movie explains, you know, like, by the end of the movie, there's still a little stuff that is is very much, like, up to interpretation, but, you know, there's, I'm, I'm going to try to explore, you know, my interpretation, and there are, I'm also... You know, I'll link to a video that talks about the, the ending in the description box. In addition to, of course, links to support sag -Aftra. Please support. It's a very important strike. Now, but but yeah, like, by, by and large, like, literally, the characters explain the symbolism. They'll, they'll say, you know, this is what that means. So I, I don't really know why people struggle so much with the symbolism. Anyway, I've been really happy with dark progressive films that are horror and or comedy of recent years. I've agreed with the messages in progressive movies and shows for many years, but I think in recent years the filmmakers have gotten better at making it biting. Uh, you know, just really, like, let's stop pretend, let, let's stop speaking with our inside voices here. Let's, let's actually, you know, literally... The far right is destroying the world. They're killing us all. Some of some of us fairly slowly through climate change. You know, various minorities have been targeted with literal hate crimes, sometimes murder. I, I think the time has passed for being subtle about it. Let's you know un, until until it sticks. I I think we should keep going hard on it. Now, uh, so yeah. Uh, a brief ranking, worst to best, uh, and I. Uh, the following list, I'll update it at the end of the review with where I place this in the ranking, but yeah. Um, so yeah, rank worst to best. 
other than this, and I loved all of these except for Antlers, which I do love aspects of. And I also want to note, almost all of these I've watched twice, and they hold up. But yeah, Antlers, not okay. The Menu, Ready or Not, Plan B, Barbarian, Fresh, and then the two that I haven't watched more than once, The Night House, and Everything Everywhere, all at once. And, you know, keep in mind, not all of these are both horror and comedies. Some of them are only one of the two. And, uh, yeah, early on, friend, you know, Ella is asked, what do you do all day without kids? And we see, you know, she's she's got a career, she does self-care, she does, um, I, I don't know if it's called a charity, but she's like, she delivers food to the elderly, you know, and she has sex with her husband of 10 years, you know, these are healthy things to do. It's not like, oh, she must just sit around in the dark all day, be depressed and hating people who do have children, you know, no, it's, and, and this is, like, when you, when you see, like, there's a lot, of, today, there are a lot of women, you know, this isn't, yeah, like I mentioned, this is not like, oh, one person feels like, it. no, this is something many women feel, a lot of women today are choosing to have families later, some are choosing not to have kids at all, and I think it's, I think they should have that choice, I don't think anybody should feel forced into, and certainly, like, if you feel, if, if you wish you could raise a child, but you're uncomfortable with the idea of pregnancy and birth, try to adopt. There's a lot of kids out there who would love to be adopted by a loving parent, a couple, uh, you know, whether, you know, and it doesn't need to be, you know, a, a straight couple. Studies show that the important thing is that the parents are loving. It doesn't matter if there's one man and one woman. It can be two women. It can be two men. Uh, now the but but yeah, you know this is very much a film that has empathy for the child-free fighting back against the childless trope. Women who are miserable because they do not have biological children. Uh, you know, is that true of some people? Yes, but far from all. And uh, I'll also link a video. The, um, the Take did an excellent video talking about child-free versus childless. Uh, that, that'll be linked in the description box. Um, I've seen some criticize that at least one of the things that happens during the treatment, possibly as a result of it, seems counterproductive. I mean, yeah, it's modern medicine. Sometimes it does the exact opposite of what it's supposed to do. Painkillers can lead to increased pain. Antidepressants can worsen your depression. It's not bad writing. It's realism. Now, maybe you've been fortunate enough to not experience any of these pr problems, but if that's the case, then you should do your research before leaving such an ignorant comment. And that is... Let's... Yeah, so the, the movie does a good job setting up early what the movie is going to be like. I'm not going to give away whether the ending, whether it's a happy ending or a sad ending, but, you know, some people have taken issue with the ending, and I can understand why, and it definitely does... There's... There's an aspect to it that, you know, requires that you analyze. And that is something that, sadly, a lot of horror fans are not particularly interested in doing. You know, so sometimes I wish... Okay, I know some people think it is ridiculously pretentious. But yes, this movie, the, the, the term elevated horror fits. You know, this is not something we just want you to, you know, someone kill a bunch of people and, you know that's it there's nothing to think about you know i'm not hating on those movies slasher movie you know if you i don't know if, i feel like a lot of the movies i've put up behind me if you know you know but yeah those are the first eight of the jason movies i do have the last two also uh i just you know ran out of space to to fit them all up there you know uh nightmare on elm street uh, one through seven uh, you know and i do own the remake yes it was the only way for me to watch it and i've Felt like I should watch it. It's garbage, but you know, and the yeah, watched every Scream movie. I don't love the third one, but the other, you know, let's see, what are we up to? There's six total. The other five I do love. Um, absolutely love Halloween and the H40 trilogy. The most of the other sequels are garbage, but you know, that's yeah. 
sucks, but a lot of a lot of slasher sequels are are not not good. Some slasher movies, even the first one, isn't good. But yes, it is a subgenre that I have a lot of love for. But I don't think that should mean that elevated horror gets a bad rap just because a lot of horror chooses to be very simplistic and. It's, I, sometimes I wish that there was just that, you know, when when you go to pick a, a movie, there's there's horror and then there's elevated horror, and they were completely cleanly separated, uh, you know. And I'm just gonna put out there, the people who watch elevated horror and then complain that it's too intellectual, you're the ones giving us other horror fans a bad name. Now, but but yeah. Um, I certainly think the the ending of the movie is interesting, and it easily could have been not that. Now, that brings us to the character. So, Diana Agron plays Ella, and holy crap, that is her! Yeah. Debbie Marshall on Heroes. Cool. Yeah, it's just been so long since I saw... And she actually is 37 in, in real life. Uh, you know, but but yeah. Um, and let's see. Yes, she is also actually Jewish. Doesn't have to be, but I do think that it means that she understands the issues. I'm not Jewish, so I'm, I only have an outsider's perspective. But yeah, you know, the, the movie is very much... It, it has these issues that are, are close to the hearts of Jewish people that, like, if you're not Jewish, you might really struggle to understand. I, I try to understand everyone. Now, let's see. But, and, and that's, again, that's another thing that just, if you're going to watch a movie, don't complain that you have a difficult time understanding the protagonist. Try to understand them. You know, just... It's some movies do a bad job. Some movies, the protagonist doesn't make sense. This is not one of those movies. But but um, she's amazing in this. Um, honestly, the movie's worth watching just for her performance. Just it's it's unreal. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, Jay Ali plays her husband, Aiden Patel. And I did not expect to see him again this soon. Uh, recently watched Daredevil, loved him on that, and loved him here. Uh, yeah. And that's basically... Yeah, so... Yeah, I hope to see him in more. He's, he's amazing. And Melora Hardin plays Dr. Elizabeth Simmons. I think ready to hear... Dr. Elizabeth Simmons said many, many times, if you watch the movie, an argument could be made that it's at least once or twice too many. Yeah, she's also amazing. She's um, she's the doctor who helps with the you know the the clinical trial that Ella goes through, and yeah, like there is this. You know, you, you get the sense that she 100% believes in the the procedure. And, yeah, like, there's this... She treads a very, very delicate balance. There, there's the line. There's this balance because, on the one hand, she, she seems legitimately professional. She seems like, you know, you can understand why people would trust her. Because that's obviously, like, if you're entering a clinical trial, it's very important whether you trust the people responsible or not. But at the same time, there's just, you know, every so often there's, like, a, a line or a look or something where you get, like, you just, you feel like there's something wrong here. This is not, that's not right. That's, no, just, Yeah. Uh, Grace Porter plays Shauna, a friend of Ella who wants her to, you know, uh, right. Ella is this, you know, I'm not sure exactly what the word is. I guess it's, is it architect? 
she she's like Shauna wants Ella to paint the the nursery because she's you know yeah she's very pregnant and she she really you know on on the one hand she really trusts Ella but it is also it's Ella's job you know it's not it's not just we're friends so here's you know and you know that of course that is one of the places where you get this you know this is very much a movie about you know the idea of of pregnancy of becoming pregnant of giving birth and yeah this very very you know soon do pregnant pregnant woman that is of course you know the fact that she's a you know the the first scene features like four or five pregnant women not all of them keep reappearing but Shauna does because she's a friend of yeah and Ella's father Joseph is played by Saul Rubinek who just does amazing um yeah and and it's you know basically he he pressures her to have children because his parents survived the Holocaust. And, again, I, it's not that you have to, you know, if you can't, it's just, you should try to. And, yeah, the, the effort was made. Saul Rubinek, the actor, his parents actually were, you know, uh, yeah, I'm just going to, a little bit from uh, Wikipedia, they were Yiddish-speaking Polish Jews, and they had been hidden by Polish farmers for over two years during World War II. And they immigrated to Canada in 1948. So, so yeah. Um, and, oh, he actually he wrote a book called So Many Miracles on his parents' experiences in the war. So it's very personal for him, and it shows in the performance. You know, he clearly completely understands and you know and he's one of the characters like with you know the very first scene and the trailer and some reviews make him seem very one note but then you watch more of the movie and you should and you see no there's there's more there he's not you know just yeah um, let's see. And the the dialogue is is quite good, both writing and delivery. There are some very careful choices of words, and like you know, there there are a couple of times where it feels very much like Alexis Jack now is having Ella say something that is, you know, something that she would, you know, like, if if it were a TED Talk, she would be saying, she, she would be saying basically the same thing, you know, but it doesn't happen that many times. There's maybe twice in, in the movie where that happens, you know, and, and it's one of those things, I don't know if I would call it, like, a weak spot of the movie or like you know easy preachy that kind of thing I mean it works it absolutely works and sometimes because it doesn't feel like the movie is stopping cold and having a message delivered as much as this is what Ella would say in that situation but but yeah you know at one point she talks about all the things that, you know, yeah, all this, the, the anxious, all the anxieties of, of, like, carrying a child and giving birth and taking care of a baby. And, and yeah, um, you know, it is very much, it's, it's, you can tell that thought went into it. It's not just like the very first reaction to. Now the cinematography is really really good. I'm gonna let's see the name. 
Yeah, it was handled by Martim Vian and I. Uh, let's see. I am not seeing a gender here, so I will. Yeah, um, Martin. There we go. Yeah, um, Martin has DP'd 46 finished projects and has one coming up. And DP'd the, the short as well. Um, so, yeah, you know, they very much. They 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 the, their vision was was shared and um, yeah so a number of the things that Martin DP'd are like shorts and such but um, yeah tremendous talent like it doesn't feel like is it the feature yeah I'm not I'm not entirely sure it's the feature uh, debut. But it doesn't it doesn't feel like someone who's usually doing shorts and, and TV stuff and such. There's this really great shot where it's like a long take where the camera, you know, Ella leaves and gets in her car and the camera like turns, I guess it's I guess it's only like 90 degrees, but it just it's gorgeous, you know, to capture, you know, um, Hold on, the name of the... Aiden. Aiden comes to, to you know, up to the, the car, and then it pans back, and then the camera stays, you know, the, the take goes on for a little after. She drives also, and just, yeah, really gorgeous. Uh, yeah. The editing was handled by Alexandra Amick, who has only 11 credits as editor and uh, yeah some of it shorts some of it TV several Muppets projects actually kinda looks like about half the stuff she said it did like Muppets related yeah uh, it doesn't feel like that it doesn't feel like oh you know usually I shoot puppets but okay but yeah, um, there's some incredible decisions made in the editing that really bring scenes to life. Uh, you know, there are these. Yeah, I already mentioned there's some some body horror and such. Editing around that is extremely important. There's some people who are so proud of the effects that they don't really cut away, and like after a while, you kind of get used to seeing it. You know, you have to edit to reaction shots and and like different angles on the effects and such if you just show the same shot over and over you know i i get it you know i've i've been fortunate enough to work on something where we did a really really effective effect shot and you know when we were editing we were like we got it we got it we can't just leave it you know we'll we'll leave in as much as we can because it looks amazing but it's you know, and it was it was a fairly simple effect. It was a, um, a a pinky finger got like crushed with a hammer, and it just you know, and it, you know, if you know much of anything, it's yeah, it's you know, latex and and fake blood, as you know, very very simple stuff. But it looked so convincing. Um, just yeah, we we kept in as much as as we could, but. Yeah, we would have liked to keep in more because it looked great. I really admire um, the editing here by Alexandra that she did not just stay on the yeah. And it's you know some some movies today are edited too fast so things don't hit, and that's not the case here. Now the movie, let's see. Right, uh, it does not say on IMDb where it was filmed. They they got a really great... I don't know if it's... Did they really find a location like this? It almost must be a set, but the the facility for the clinical trial just really has... that. Like, it's very... There's a lot of, of white, there's a lot of windows, and the the... 
you know, it's it's right by nature. So, you know, hypothetically, it should feel like, you know, at worst, like neutral, just like calming, soothing. And considering that there's like drugs involved and, and some people are clearly like really, you know, some people kind of freak out during this stuff. Makes a lot of sense to have that. You know, you don't want like abstract paintings on the wall that that can trigger people you know so and i use that term unironically triggering i mean you know so so just but at the same time it just feels like there's something off here there's something uh you know and yeah they they did an incredible job on that um yeah we go to a couple of different uh, people's houses and you really get a sense of who they are based on the way they live, uh, you know, the things they've kept, the th the way that they've decorated, and and such. And yeah, it's, again, really, really great job. And the yeah, you really get a sense of who they are as as people from the the entire the the place they live. Now, the music was handled by Stephen Lu Lukash, and let's see, he has, he's composed for ten total, some of them shorts, some TV series, um, and let's see, yeah, it's not the very first feature he's composed for, but it is one of the first. And, oh, he's composing for VHS 85. Very cool. Um, but, but yeah, he does an incredible job. There's, like, at first, especially based on some of the stuff I read in reviews, I thought that it was going to be very repetitive. But there's a good variety to it. And, yeah, you know, like, the, the tense and suspenseful stuff is very effective, like, very, like, gripping and just really gets to you. Then there's some stuff that's like, there's this part that kind of sounds like lullaby-ish and just, yeah, you know, it's it's a movie that very much explores, like, what hormones actually physically do to women and what it can feel like they're doing. And, you know, the, the visual effects is part of that. But the music is also a big part of that, uh, along with, of course, the acting. And, yeah, in incredible. Um, the sound design, holy crap. Very, very, just incredible work there. And, yeah, so the movie is 85 and a half minutes long without end credits and only 91 minutes with and... I've seen some people say that they thought it was much too long. I really didn't feel that it, you know, in my opinion, it flies right by. It's it feels like you you don't and it, no part of it drags. And I mean, there's there's a couple of characters and relationships that are revisited multiple times over the course of it. But there's growth there. St stuff happens. It's not just the same thing over and over. But, yeah. It's not what everybody, you know, wants out of a horror movie. Yeah. Um, the best elements are the, the performance by Diana Agron. The exploration of societal pressures for women to have kids. And, yeah, just, like, what it does to your mind and body. The, the you know, thinking about having kids, feeling that you have to, and, yeah. Um, I, so, yeah, this is the part where I try to make myself say something negative about the movie. I, there's not really much... Of anything, um, no, yeah, I, I don't really. I, you know, I've, I've said a couple of critical things. That's where it's gonna, 
Now, uh, something I saw multiple reviewers, uh, user reviewers say is that it starts strong, but it gets bad over the course of it, and yeah, I, I don't agree, but I do, you know, if that is, you know, maybe maybe try reading reviews, and if if you worry that you would feel the same, because that is that is a problem for horror movies, you know. It's that thing of, like, it can be difficult to make something consistently scary and interesting for 90 minutes. A, a lot of horror stories should just be, like, episodes of Twilight Zone or something, you know, but that's not where the that's not what the market really you know wants so we we get but but this really didn't feel stretched in in my opinion um i was a little worried that this would be too difficult to for me to get into since i'm not a cis woman or a trans man so you know at no point in my life has you know but i felt like the movie made it very clear and yeah, um, thing I was most looking forward to was more modern horror. And yeah, really, really happy that I gave this a chance. And yeah, so this has a 79% on Rotten Tomatoes, um, 39 reviews total, 31 fresh. The average rating 6.20 out of 10, which does tell you, you know, it wasn't that they were completely bowled over. Um, the user the the audience score based on 250 plus ratings 74 percent average rating of 3.7 out of five and on metacritic it has a 59 out of 100 for critics based on seven reviews four of them positive three of them mixed and let's see um Yeah, let's see. So one of one of the mixed says that the it becomes, you know, there's yeah, there's two very distinct audiences for this, and the film. Another says the film doesn't stick the landing, and another said that it tantalizes with thought provoking ideas, only to abandon them. I will say it could have. Yeah, overall, it it could have done more with the with the ideas. That is true. Now, the user score on Metacritic is four point four out of ten, based on nine ratings, two positive, five mixed, and two negative. Now, let's see the. So yeah, there's five submitted reviews. Two of them positive. Three of them mixed. Now, let's see the mixed. Yeah, one says meandering and stale. No, I disagree, but that is what some felt. Another f said it was tedious formula. And, uh, yeah, one person says, you know, it starts, it, yeah, starts strong, goes off the rails. Now, on IMDb, it has a rating from users of 5.0 out of 10 based on 4,300 votes 5... 22.2% uh, gave it a 5 out of 10 18.6 gave it 6, 13.5 gave it 4 8.9 gave it 1 10.4 gave it 7, okay that high of a 1, that sounds to me like people who were offended by like the idea and I I've seen some people offended by the way it invokes the Holocaust and I understand why you know I think that the movie earns it uh, I really don't like telling Jewish people not to discuss the Holocaust in media that's that just feels like I think you're entitled to. That's that's uh, kind of generational trauma that I don't know if I'm not sure anyone can. You know, I, yeah. How how do you recover from that? How do you how do you not think about that? 
and I don't think that it's done in bad taste. That would be the thing, you know, obviously it can be done in bad taste. I don't think it was here. Now, um, let's see, 7.5% gave it 10, 7.4% gave it 3, 5.1% gave it 2, 4.9% gave it 8, 1.4% gave it 9, and on IMDb it has 51 user reviews, or if you hide spoilers, 41. I read the 41 spoiler-free ones, and so let's see, yeah, and, and of the 51, 5 gave it 1 out of 10, 6 gave it 2, 3 gave it 3, 4 gave it 4, 6 gave it 5, 7 gave it 6, 6 gave it 7, 8 gave it 8, 2 gave it 9, and none gave it 10. So, yeah, a lot of people that chose to, to review it did not really love it. Some did, though. And, yeah, so the special effects, like, there's a tiny little bit that's like CG and you can really tell it's CG but almost all of them really hold up like there's a lot of practical effects on display and love to see it like I you know a lot of people today don't go for practical effects and I I get it like I said I worked on some and it's messy it's really really messy uh, you know CG isn't easy but it is less it can be less labor-intensive during the production phase, you know, it's less to deal with on set unless it's very high, you know, like the Marvel movies, uh, you know, it's very labor intensive, obviously. But yeah, they they did incredible, like uh, just, you know, there's some images here that I, it's going to be a long time before they're out of my mind and I'm here for it. I will grant the the stunt work felt very safe. Like there's a couple of times where like there's minor stunts and it did I I can imagine, you know, maybe they didn't have the the budget for it. Like it uh yeah, I'm not seeing any information on what the budget wa was for this. And it's again, you know, stunts yeah, if you you know, it requires more to to do like complex stunts, and this is you know it it feels maybe maybe it was a budget thing maybe they just didn't feel like it was necessary, um, and and I do uh, let's see I don't want to uh, let's see they probably did have some stunt. Let's real quick see stunt. Yeah, yeah, they did have a uh, stunt team. Uh, was that like a dozen people? So it's not it's not nothing, but you know it was probably the amount of time that they could film stunts that ended up leading to you know. But it's not a big deal. It didn't ruin the movie or anything. The violence does get uh, quite intense at times, and that's definitely, you know, it's not, there's not enough of that for the, the gore, you know, if, if you're just a gore hound, you just want, again, you know, sometimes that's what I'm in the mood for when, with horror. This is not going to have, this is not going to scratch that itch. It is, you know, that is the thing, like, it is... It's a bit intense for, like, if you're just, if you don't normally watch horror movies, but you're a young Jewish woman, you know, maybe you don't have children, maybe you do, but it was a difficult decision. If you're not used to watching horror movies, I don't really recommend watching the, uh, I mean, I guess if you're really good at anticipating and, like, covering your eyes, but other than that, no, this is not, you know, and I do acknowledge that that is... You know, but that, that's the thing, like, that, that, that is perhaps an issue. For some women, it feels like a, it feels like visceral horror when, when they think about having kids, when they feel pressure, especially hormonal, to have kids. So it's, you know, it, it does, again, it, you know, it would feel weird to me if it was like a cheery musical. You know, the fact that it's a visceral horror movie 
psychological horror movie, it, it fits. But that's not what all women experience, and it's not what all women want to see when they want the anxieties explored. So, you know, I, I acknowledge, and that's also, you know, horror movies today are, they, they do go very, very far. So, let's see. Uh, so, so yeah, uh, on, on Disney+, Plus, at least here in Western Europe, there are no special features, and, yeah, um, I rate this 7 rebuts of the biological clock out of 10. I just realized, I'm not sure I've mentioned, but that is the clock of the title, the biological clock. So... I suppose overall it is yeah I guess ultimately the ranking it is yes um it's right above antlers um yeah I love it but it's not quite as good as the ones further down on the list. Or for, yeah, further up, further higher rated on the list is what I mean. So I'm just going to make sure to save the list. There we go. And yeah, so before I get into thoughts, I wanted to talk briefly about some... Oh, We'll see if it's brief, but I wanted to, to respond to some reviews that, um, let's see, so, yeah, so, um, starting with a few from, like, uh, professional critics. Uh, one says, as soon as one reads the synopsis, it's clear what they're getting themselves into. Sure, it's been done before, but not like this and not with this sense of urgency. Absolutely agreed. Where many horror-adjacent movies can struggle evoking much of anything in the viewer, Clock continually succeeds at creating a feeling of destabilization. Jack now speaks to a number of compelling issues, exploring them through a horror framework in a way that can be genuinely disturbing. Agron throws herself fully into the role, and the first 45 minutes of Jack now's disturbing commentary works wonders. And, yeah, they, they feel it strays and winds up losing its punch near the end. I don't really agree. Uh, there is a void in the market for horror films that speak directly to non-parents. Jack now also shows enough command of both the material and the production design to prove her horror bona fides. Absolutely true. Effectively disturbing thrill about a particular type of social pressure. And let's see. While a fascinating meditation on human nature, modern day moors around childbirth, Clock is def most definitely not your conventional crowd-pleasing horror. The central idea of the pressure on women to conceive is an interesting starting point. Let's see. Yeah, and the, this person feels the supposed clinical trial Ella participates in is so far-fetched her motivation to rush for much believability. I think it's very important. I saw I saw one person say it's essentially like a satire in in you know horror clothing, and I really think it's necessary to not watch this expecting it to completely like just represent reality and I don't think it would make sense for a movie like this to do that uh, you know in my opinion every piece of media creates its own world and you know you can you can embrace it you can reject it you know some of them I do reject but I think it's I think you're missing out if you reject out of hand something that doesn't feel believable um, Let's see. And you know, I already mentioned the the aspects of the clinical trial that definitely do feel off. And yeah, I think it is. I I feel like it reflects the unease that you know the the child free you know women approaching the the you know age thirty eight is you know. Yeah, it, it's not what a clinical trial like that would be in the real world, 
but it is what it feels like to someone who feels pressure towards it. And let's see. So yes, back to critic quote. Unsettling and disturbing. This film will sit with you for days. And let's see. Jack now hammers away with symbolism, pulls rugs from under our feet, swerves wildly through a messy act punctuated with some gruesome imagery. Agron hangs on, and ultimately we're there with her. Although it's replete with so so yeah, most of what that critic said I don't really agree with, but you know. They're entitled to their opinion. Although it's replete with silly horror movie choices, Clock manages to encapsulate the society-induced anxiety for a family. And, yeah, I, the, the following is fair. Clock leans too heavily on too obvious visual metaphors, but it's still a vivid and visceral explication of one woman's fears. That's definitely, you know, I don't think it makes a lot of sense to say, what does this mean? Like, it's fairly obvious, you know. If, if anything, yeah, too obvious. Now, overall, this is a well-made movie that should promote some difficult conversations, even if it doesn't necessarily succeed in the ways you would expect. Be prepared, as you cannot unsee a few of the things in this movie. Let's see, that you cannot unsee. Tapping into everyone, every expectant mother's deep well of fears, Alexis Jacknow's clock is genuinely disturbing, a flawed horror film that benefits greatly from brisk pacing and a dynamic lead performance from Diana Agron. This is the story of a woman surrounded by fanatics attempting to indoctrinate her against her will, because despite volunteering, the violence that ensues proves she does not consent. Clock only makes sense in the context of it forcing its main point, regardless of how nonsensical everything else becomes. And again, just, yeah, you know, fair enough, some people feel that way, don't know if it matters to say, but the person who wrote that was a man. But, yeah. It does have a main point that it's going to work. Like, you can't really have been surprised. It's super obvious right in the trailer, which I just realized I did not talk about. Yeah, the trailer does give at least a little bit too much away, but does really give you an idea of what the movie is like. I'm not unhappy that I watched the trailer first, and it's a deeply compelling trailer. If you don't watch it before, watch it after at least. Now, the, the posters don't give too much away and are compelling, worth looking up. And, yeah, give you a decent idea of what the movie's like, as, as much as a poster can for this kind of thing. Uh, Writer-director Alex Jacknow is at her best when exploring the the psychological terror of the whole situation when clock leans more into horror it is the explorations of character that resonate more Diana Agron and Melora Hardin give fine performances amid the nonsense there's just another they're just another reason the clock yeah this person says they wish the clock had more depth and coherence than it does I can maybe see the the depth I I thought it was plenty coherent Hulu's Clock is a good psychological thriller. The overall tone and imagery create enough visceral anxiety-ridden horror to cover up a few minor storytelling cliches. Offers a unique view on pregnancy from the women's POV. Clock is a psychological thriller, perhaps even satire, in horror clothing, right, tantalizing us with thought-provoking ideas only to abandon them. There are graphic, effectively disturbing images in Clock. Uh, let's see, writer-director Alex Jacknow amps up the anxiety by blending science and religion into paranoia-soaked mayhem, conjuring resonant emotion haunting menace in this psychological horror film. Clock aims to take viewers through the uncertainty of motherhood. Uh, let's see, struggles to balance all those themes, maybe. Uh, through it, though its messaging may sometimes be unsettling and strange, Jacknow has a sharp edge. Agnow has a man magnetic quality that build an intoxicating little nightmare of the film. Right, I also just realized I did not talk about the, the sexuality. You know, the movie shows sex not in like an explicit or really, you know, it never felt like it's just there to like wake up the audience or something as was the case with you know, there's a lot of 80s horror movies where the sex is just there because the audience isn't expected to care about the other stuff. You know, sex and violence is, is what the audience is expected to be there for. This is more like the Marvel Netflix where, yeah, there's more sex than, you know, some people would say there's too much. 
but it always tells a story. It always tells us where these characters are and what they're thinking and feeling. You know, there's different reasons for the, the sexuality, and it never felt like it was titillation of the audience. Uh, so back to critic quotes, Ms. Angron gives a highly intelligent performance. At no time do we doubt Ella's awareness of how badly things might go, and while we do have questions about her judgment, the pressures she's under are made palpable. Uh, puts spooky, if sometimes conventional, spin on baby fever. Clock is a work of fiction heightened by the psychological and body horror with a heavy dose of reality. Despite its fascinating intersection of societal pressures and personal guilt, it uh, struggles in its horror approach. Let's see, and Jack now details unusual topics and behaviors with her screenplay, trying to communicate something few productions dare to explore. Smart. Writer-director Alex Alexis Jacknow's debut feature borders on brilliant. Under, under the body horror shell, however, is a thematically rich character thriller. Despite some third act stumbles, Clock is a shocking experience supported by stunning performances from Deanna Agron and Mallory, Melora Harden. Uh, uh, let's see. Yes, so... At its best when it is engaging in actual commentary on motherhood, less when it tries to make you jump, clock thoughtfully adds to the maternal horror subgenre. Right, I want to briefly say, you know, today, actually, you know, women in America are forced to carry to term if they become pregnant, no matter the circumstances, including if it literally, they literally might not survive childbirth. There was that case with, I think... It was like a 10-year-old or something who was thankfully given an abortion and then a bunch of Republicans tried to prosecute because I guess they would rather have a dead 10-year-old instead of a fetus that had been terminated. But yeah, um, you know, so, so the movie is very, you know, yeah, it's extremely relevant. I'm not entirely sure. Let's see, does this say when it was... Yeah, I believe that decision had been, uh, let's see, uh, overturning Roe v. Wade. That was, yeah, that was, that was June, and the movie was released in April. So, you know, it's only become more, the, the anxiety about pregnancy and childbirth has only become even more relevant. Let's see... One person says, a lot of Clock's horror imagery seems to have walked on set from another production. It is often effective, fantastically frenetic performance from Diana Agron. Absolutely, truly chilling, central entity and interrogations of Jewish heritage. Elevate Clock and the potential of further monstrous motherhood stories above otherwise lackluster competition stateside. Clock uses horror to convey the struggle of being a child-free woman and the lengths one is willing to go in order to feel normal. Jack now offers a rumination that expands beyond the internal struggle potential childbirthers face into the external, presenting a horror show that's elevated enough to disquiet, real enough to generate th chills all its own. Alexis Jack now's def debut starts as pre-menopausal satire before delivering a tragedy of horror specific to womanhood. And yeah, then there's like this one reviewer on uh, the user reviewer on on um, Rotten Tomatoes wrote 108 words. Keeping in mind, on Rotten Tomatoes, you can write like five words, and that's fine. There's no minimum character limit. Literally, all they wrote. I'm not gonna read any of it because I don't want to waste your time. But all they wrote was, this was bad, dumb, you know, just, there's, there's nothing. They, be, like, there's a couple of, not nothing, like, they said that the non-existent story was dumb, and the, yeah, they thought the main character was insanely dumb, yeah, that's that's it. Like, there's there's almost no actual criticism in there. Like, it's fine if you thought it was boring, but just write 
thought it was boring and move on. Like anyway, um, let's see. Yeah, one person. That, Rotten Tomatoes is so misleading these days. You don't understand how Rotten Tomatoes works. And let's see. Then the yeah, one one person wrote um, the movie is a lot about guilt trips, guilt trip about the Holocaust, which you know this person doesn't actually write that they thought it was in bad taste, so I guess they just don't think. Fair enough. Some people feel that you shouldn't bring the Holocaust into it. I just, like I said, I don't, I'm not a fan of, of judging Jewish people for bringing the Holocaust into, into media. And yeah, then, then this person goes on to say, guilt trip about not wanting a baby. I'm over 50 with no kids. Somehow I'm okay. Just because you personally feel that way doesn't mean that there isn't huge societal pressure. So fucking stupid. Um, right, and and then they said guilt trip over, and okay, I'm not gonna read the rest of that sentence because it's a spoiler, but then, like, but then they said that, you know, it was, but then they seem to agree with how the movie handled that, so I don't know. Just, yeah, like, some horror movies make you feel guilty. That's not... Like, again, you know, I don't... You know, if this stuff was in, like, a Pixar movie, you know, some of the imagery here was in a Pixar movie, I'd be like, okay, that's not appropriate. You know, don't, don't show that to children. But it's a movie for adults. It's clearly only for adults. Let's see... Right, and yeah, now I remember why I thought the eggs... Okay, so I'm just going to quote directly. So she likes eating eggs. There were at least four scenes in the movie with her eating eggs. Really, all caps. Who cares? It's a metaphor. A chicken egg and the eggs in her womb. I don't know how you miss that obvious of a metaphor. Uh, good job. Let's see. Right, and and the um, oh, that actually, yeah, I want to read that, but it's a spoiler, so I'm gonna put it in the spoiler section. There we go. And. Yeah, and then this part, one person says this cannot be considered a horror movie, which is just fascinating. I don't, I don't know what kind of movie you think these visceral horror images. Yeah, and one person said weird and kind of boring, much like a David Cronenberg movie. David Cronenberg is boring. He's weird to be one hundred percent, but boring. Wow. But yeah, I mean, if you find David Cronenberg boring, this movie is not for you. I, I agree. Uh, let's see. And the... Um, right, and this is, the, the, this is great. Clock is a truly masterful depiction of the psychological mind-bend of societal and cultural pressures on women, telling of this true theme that so many women of this generation are struggling and exasperated with as a psychological horror story is brilliant. The writing of this story is a swerving, surprising, emotional, scary, and beautiful psychological trip matches the potency and realness of what women really go through. It's beautiful and brilliant and disturbing writing, and imagery matches the theme. Its artful and engaging horror is so good because it's real. It gives life to the real trials of modern women and a mental health impact that so many struggle to even articulate and process. It's truly masterful and something everyone would benefit from watching. See, that's the kind of... that's... That's why I read online reviews, because every so often you hit on something like, that's a really great, even if I didn't agree with their 
a certain, you know, their, their, how they felt about the movie, they actually explain why, you know, just, yeah. Anyway, I think I will just, let's see. Yeah, so that I don't spend forever on this. I'm, let's see, I feel like there was one of the IMDb user reviews. Let's see. Um... Yeah, uh, one brief, you know, one person gave it an 8 out of 10, and and this uh, one-line summary is, I think the low ratings are due to people's discomfort of the subject matter. Absolutely. Agreed. Let's see. Yeah, that is... All that I yeah. See, this this person did say that um, they felt that use the the use of the Holocaust was crass and a clumsy metaphor. Metaphor? That wasn't a metaphor. Is okay. I. I think I, I know what they mean, but they, yeah, it's not a metaphor. It's it's a thematic element. But anyway, um, yeah. So the anyway, yes. Let's get into the thoughts section. So I just realized, yeah, the spoiler thing has been on the whole time. Whoops. Um, yeah. So, starting with notes taken while watching, please do not watch any further. If you haven't watched the movie, I will be spoiling absolutely everything. Do not rob yourself of your of, of the excellent experience of watching this. So, yeah, we open on the you know, a another patient from the the clinical trial. And yeah, that's that's a lot of blood. Holy crap. And she hangs herself on a chain and the the implant falls out so you know right away we we know okay this is you know certainly some women feel that it was completely wrong for them with this yeah and yeah and we start you know the first time we see Ella you know she takes she she eats eggs as she is wants to do and She's overhearing these pregnant women talking these really just incredibly disgusting details about, you know, to, to be clear, I'm not saying that, you know, if you go through something like that, I do think you have all the right in the world to process it verbally. The problem here is that there's a woman right there who isn't pregnant and doesn't want to be, you know, right, I just realized, I, I meant, yeah, I saw at least one person say they didn't think that it really made sense that the, um, what's the word, they felt that, that, you know, you know, because early on, L says, you know, I don't want kids, you know, but she also agrees to this clinical trial. I think it's important to, I think it's, you know, we, we need to, you know, there are different ways to understand want or do not want something. I don't, you know, she's, she's not saying like, you know, the way that, you know, oh, you know, it's it's more like, you know, 
it's like with how you know sometimes you want sometimes you feel like a certain food for example she doesn't feel like becoming pregnant but she, that doesn't it's not that she doesn't at all want kids she's just you know she's basically you know she she explains you know she she feels it's it's the fact that you know maybe the maybe there'll be another holocaust maybe you know how could she put a child into the world knowing that at some point someone will gas them to death you know for for being jewish you know it's it's basically that you know is is my interpretation at least now let's see yeah um when when Ella sees you know like uh, Shauna is like oh the baby's kicking you know hey Elle wanna feel and we see this like oh my god that looked horrifying just yeah the the fingers poking through the the belly and just yeah really really you know and and it is like I mean. It is kind of creepy to think about that, you know, and, and I know, you know, uh, you know, we all came from there, but it is still kind of creepy to think about there's, there's a, there's a living human being in there, inside, just, yeah. So I really appreciate that appearing in the movie, and, the, you know, as soon as, you know, the, you know, of course... It's, it was just a matter of time before one of the, the moms asked Elle, when are you and Aiden having kids? You know, and Shauna tries to be supportive and says, oh, you know, she, she doesn't want kids. And the, the yeah, they, they get ridiculously pushy. And it's the kind of, like, I'm not sure anybody's actually literally completely that pushy and, and obnoxious about it. I think that's satire on, that's how it feels, you know, it feels like every time you meet new people, you know, as as as, long, as soon as you're among, you know, your, your friends, the, they'll tell you you should be having having kids, you know, I, I really don't think it's saying that literally, you know, it, yeah, um, I mean, throughout the entire movie, you know, cer certainly once she starts the clinical trial, she's hallucinating. It seems to me like throughout the movie, we're seeing her perception of what's going on. And just the clinical trial makes it more like the, like the hallucinations get darker kind of thing. And... Um, yeah, really, really great um, montage. We see the the yeah the various things that she does that make her life feel like it has meaning without kids, you know. And I do appreciate that it is also set up immediately that like Ella's work is really popular with the uh, you know Shauna is really really happy that she's you know. That Ella is doing the the nursery, and let's see, yeah, and the the kid that's like up on the branch, like, oh my god, and and you know Ella's like, um, whose kid is, and and they're just, you know, no, 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 you're you have to have a baby, you know, nothing else in the world matters, and and the kid does eventually fall down. I don't want to I feel like too many people are too negative about the movie The Babadook. So I want to make clear I'm not trying to spread negativity about it. I just, you know, I love it. I it's one of my favorite recent horror movies. You know, I I absolutely love it. The the yeah. However, there is a part of it where basically there's a kid that seems like, you know, they're in danger in some way. 
and the way it was filmed and edited was just not amazing and yeah this was somewhat similar and it was better handled here let's see and yeah um you know l goes to the to dr weber for a checkup and it starts awkward and gets even worse and the doctor pushes for babies as well and yeah and you know she she she's been like some of her work has been published which is of, of course amazing so she you know takes a photo of that posts it online and then she sees the the feed that's all babies and pregnant bellies and Joseph really likes hospital grade pens you know it's a it's it's kind of sweet you know he just he makes him so happy you know and and Ella's like come on I just got rid of all the other pens you know, just yeah I really appreciate that that was that like in the trailer you don't see that you just you know in the, the trailer you see him talking about oh why don't you have kids you know we actually get this very sweet moment before that you know he's it's very humanizing you know it's, it's yeah let's see and yeah and then he too starts pushing for kids and let's see yeah and and you know L you know wants to discard the the condom and you know yeah Aiden is like you can't you can't become pregnant just because of Joseph you know that and Aiden claims that he's fine with them not having kids and then you have the very unfortunate, you know, he's, it's, I forget the exact line, but he says something like fix, you know, and it's like, so you do think it's a problem. You think it's something that needs fixing. And yeah, and, and then we get, the, you know, she, she grabs the, this little um, bit of paper that has, you know, I, I thought they did this very well. I don't know if it was in the writing process or editing process, but I really appreciate that we didn't... It, it wasn't necessary to show her getting the, the cell number before. I, I thought it was a very smart placement chronologically. To, you know, yeah, out of chronological order, but when it... You know, because it comes to her mind because of the the fix talk and yeah and we, and we get this great 90 degree turn of the camera in the car and an L calls to turn down the job and goes to the trial place and there's a lot of documents to go through. Holy crap, that was like, jeez. War and Peace, the, the medical file, you know, just, yeah. And, you know, and, and, um, uh, Dr. Elizabeth Simmons, I don't know how I forgot. They say it like seven times. You know, she seems nice and she seems like a approachable and, and this kind of, you know. But the, the, then she does say, you know, it is our evolutionary purpose to, to recreate, to, to procreate. The, the, you know, it is our purpose in life, you know, which is, uh, that's, Lay it on thick, Doc. And let's see. Yeah, and, and you know, the, the drugs are like the hormones that she's already, you know. Uh, so, yeah, and she says it's a chemical imbalance, like depression. 
and, you know, yeah, 10 days of CBT, and there will be follow-ups afterwards. And, you know, she, she says, oh, I might be a difficult case. You're not a case to me. You're a, you're a person. And the best, you're a human. And the best kind of human. What kind is that? A woman. You know, it, it's uh, like I, I only hinted in the review itself that there's something off here. But I, you know, now that I'm talking spoilers, I mean, it feels like a cult. You know, it feels like, you know, that let's let's get these women who don't, they just don't know yet that they want to have kids. You know, let's get them to this isolated place, give them hormones that, you know, will make them want to have kids. And, you know, a woman is the very best kind of human. You know, I, I do think, you know, women are amazing. But the, just, yeah, there's a, there's a cult vibe and... It's just, yeah, um, Melora Harden does an amazing job because it is that thing of, like, cult leaders have a very distinct, you know, and she doesn't always feel like a cult leader. Some of the time she feels like just some, you know, the fact that she comes in and she's like, oh, don't worry about the paperwork. You know, a cult leader would be like, I don't know why you're not reading it, but okay, you know, I mean, I can't force you to do anything. It's just... The right thing to do is that you know he like there'd be all these passive aggressive pushy but but she's she feels like she 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 feels like she legitimately sees Ella as a human, but then she's a, you know best kind of human a woman, so it feels like again this cult thing where you know yeah she I mean she says human but she means cult member. Let's see. And then we have the, um, right, and, and some score with, uh, you know, th the score at this point features a solo female singer vocalizing. I thought it worked really well, you know, ba basically like underlining like femininity. It's like, holy crap. I forgot I... Jesus Christ! I wrote four pages of notes. That's the you know not not like huge pages that are they're, they're this size, but like it's been a while since I wrote that much for one movie. Let's see, you know, like um, yeah, I don't think the camera would focus properly, but like I wrote small and filled every single bit of the page. So yeah. Anyway, and and you know she said, you know, the, the food is actually quite good, and I mean, holy crap, it's it's salmon, and like she barely touches it with the thing, and it just separates. Oh, I thought the bear was the only thing I was gonna watch on Disney Plus recently that would make me really hungry. Let's see, and you know Ella talks about why she doesn't want kids, and it does make perfect sense. You know the this thing of. The, the the pain, the discomfort, you know, and, you know, why take the risk of dying during childbirth? And I appreciate that she did have another character, you know, like, as much as, like, by the end, Dr. Liz doesn't, you know, isn't completely credible, but what she says, you know, it's not true of everywhere in the world, but it is true of, like, many developed countries certainly uh, you know and and you know for ella the money isn't going to be a problem which you know sadly poor people do die you know in in relation to that in america because of you know the absurd healthcare payment anyway um but but yeah the um let's see the the yeah, you know, if if you have money, if you're in a developed country, or if you just yeah, if you're in a developed country and the money the the you know the payment is being taken care of, whether it's you or or someone else, the the then you're not likely to to die during childbirth, uh, as as far as I understand, you know that is an actual. You know, so I appreciate that that Alexis Jack now did include that information. You know, and it makes it feel less like she's. I don't really get the sense that she's saying nobody should be having kids. Just you shouldn't be forced or pressured into having kids. 
you know, the, the, um, let's see, but, but yeah, and, you know, the, um, yeah, and she, she, um, yeah, then the, the Rorschach tests where, you know, the, the tall woman, the dead spiders, and the grandfather clock, and, yeah, we get explanations of the, the different, yeah, you know, we, I don't think they explain the tall woman at that point, but the other two are explained, and, let's see, Yes, yeah, so I'll talk about the spider. Oh, right, right. That's they don't explain it in this scene. They explain it next bit of next next um, therapy scene. And there's you know she sees a spider by the bed and smacks with a shoe and it's gone. And I really appreciate that there's no cut there. Like we see the spider, we see the shoe. And then it's lifted, and there's no spider on the shoe, there's no spider where, you know, so, I mean, they almost must have spliced together two takes. It looked very real. It did not look like a bit of Hulu budget CGI. Um, yeah, it, you know, it like, like, the, like the Joker making the pen disappear, you know. I'm thinking that's what it, it was. But but yeah, really, really... Yeah. Let's see. And the... Yeah. Um, then, you know, she accidentally calls it a grandfather coffin instead of grandfather clock. And they, you know, pick apart that, you know, she... Yeah, she does feel like she's being pressured into you know, procreating so that the line doesn't end with her kind of thing. And, um, yeah, and, and then she pointed, you know, so why, you know, you said family of bugs, why, you know, family of dead bugs. Because they called us bugs until people believed them, you know, and that is... I don't think that should ever be forgotten. I, I, the fact that, and I think the thing died, or, nope, it didn't die. It's still going. I think it's still going. Um, there should be plenty of, plenty of battery charge. Yeah, okay, so, um, I don't think we should ever forget the fact that the Nazis managed to convince a huge chunk of Germany, you know, maybe not absolutely everyone, but enough that they, you know, they got support towards it, you know, the, the, and, and, you know, she points out if you convince, if you convince a group of people this, you know, that, that, certain people are like insects, well, you exterminate insects, you don't, you know, nobody wants to live near, a, you know, all these insects that are gonna destroy everything, you know, so, and, yeah, I really appreciate it, um, this, let's see, this exploration of why Showa was especially evil, and, you know, she, yeah, she pointed out it was, it wasn't the only, um, genocide, it wasn't the one that killed the most, but things were good. It was doctors doing it to patients, it was people doing it to their neighbors, you know, and, and, yeah, like, it's true, you know, how, how can we be sure that it won't happen again, it's, you know, it's one thing when, like, yeah, like, um, when things are going really badly that, that, you know, a certain group will be targeted, but Germany was, you know, yeah, uh, you know, they, it's explained really well in, in the movie. 
And yeah, the the implant, I think at this point it's just men mentioned. I don't think we see it quite yet. I thought they did a great job building up to the the implant and the the visual metaphor, hallucinations and such. And the clock on the wall is ticking. So she takes it down, removes the battery, and it's still, you know, it it starts ticking again shortly after. And then she, like, walks out the room, and it's ticking louder. It's ticking even more insist insistent. You know, she cannot escape the, the pressure. Uh, you know, that was really nicely done. Excellent sound design there. And, you know, no, that wasn't the only bit of sound design I meant was excellent when I was talking about it in the review. And, yeah, she meant, you know, she, she actually goes outside and share, you know, she gets a cigarette from the other woman there. And she's like, you know, last day, you know, so almost. And she mentioned, you know, you'll, you'll feel better after the tank, you know. It's, uh, it's a <laughs> Tank, what a what a what an inviting word, you know. It just makes you feel safe. It doesn't at all make you think of tank treads crushing, you know. Just yeah, people burning inside a, a tank that's been destroyed. In in you know, just yeah. I mean, talking about like World War Two imagery. This is yeah, and. Yeah, you know, and she sees the tall woman and her neck snaps. And, yeah, you know, she calls Aiden and they basically have phone sex, you know. So it's like we're seeing that she does, you know, she, yeah, she's thinking about him. She she does like the idea. She's She's trying to like the idea. Of them having kids. Let's see. You know, if if the if she absolutely did not want kids, you know, why is she thinking about sex with her husband? You know, you would think that would feel repulsive to her, if the you know. So yeah. Let's see. Given the circumstances, I mean, not just like. In general, and I'm, you know, I'm not saying that every time a woman wants sex, she also wants kids. But because of the the treatment, you know, it seems like the drugs are kicking in, kind of thing. And yeah, so the tank is a water tank, and you know, the hallucinations get very dark in there, including the the pendulum swinging, the the baby from the umbilical cord. Like, holy shit, that was. That was really dark and and messed up and yeah and just like if you if you have it on streaming if you can go back you know go back and just look at the way that was edited like great job there because like you know you can understand why someone would just plant the camera and just watch the effect because you know but yeah the editing was was excellent and then you know yeah she she gets out of the tank and the tall woman is there and then we have the bit where like she she falls and apparently like hits her head and it just looks a little like for a horror movie you'd expect the the this bit of like bodily injury would be more you know and and especially like by by the end we're seeing her you know cut open her father and remove entrails and such so you know it's not like the movie holds back on showing really messed up stuff, but the yeah it it didn't look very convincing with the the stunt sadly. Um, and then we you know oh they we you know I was watching you and here's the you know here's the video on the on the laptop, and the video is actually the same like the 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 birth so it was exposure therapy it wasn't supposed to be calming. You know, like, some of it is, like, calming and soothing, but then intercut with these, you know, a, a birth, you know, so, so, yeah. But the tall woman was not there. That was the only part that was different. And, 
yeah, the, the implant is shown and it's going to be implanted. And she passes on the pills, which, like, you can, you can understand. Well, I mean, you know, she's been asked to take a lot of pills recently. I don't know if the... That might not be the, the time to, to pass on pills. And let's see, that brings us to the, yeah, so, you know, the pain is very intense as she's, as the implant is put in. And, you know, we're told they have to wait three weeks before sex, which, you know, yeah, you know, they have sex two weeks after and it goes badly for him, which, you know, I think the idea is supposed to be, well, yeah, you know, you had to wait a full three weeks. Now, and, you know, Dr. S gets very pushy when Elle says that she wants to leave. And, yeah, so she drives and the tall woman is there in the middle of the road and then right next to the car. And then we, you know, she drives off and we see, oh, it was like, a guy, like, a guy flagged her down, saying, you know, can you help, you know, my, my car broke down, you know, and, and is standing next to the window explaining it, and, yeah, let's see, and the, the alarm sound, really, really overpowering, excellent sound design, and the dog barks and growls at L, which, you know, that's not great, that really implies that something bad happened there, that just, yeah, and she puts like six eggs on the, you know, and it's like, oh, you know, I guess she's very, very hungry for, you know, you know that thing about, you know, oh, how do you like your eggs? And there's all these different, maybe she wants to have one of each of the, the different kinds of having eggs. But nope, she starts picking them up and uh, I really... I don't know if Diana Agron had to actually put raw eggs in her mouth. I hope they made something that just looked a lot like it. Because it wasn't like a long take, was it? I feel like they cut between the... No, wait. Oh, God. I don't think they did. There was no cut there. It was... Oh, God. You are a trooper, Diana Agron. That is... Holy shit. Just, yeah... And, yeah, they, she and Aiden almost have sex, but stop since, you know, it has to be three weeks and all. And maybe also she's feeling like, you know, she's feeling weird about sex now that, you know, yeah. Because of, you know, maybe they'll be able to, to, maybe she'll become pregnant soon, and they've been, you know, it's been 10 years that they've been together and not, and let's see, yeah, and, and she's running really hot, tries to cool down, and licks an egg, and let's see, yeah, I mean, if you're rich, you can afford that many eggs, that's, because this, was this, actually, again, maybe it was before the, the, that whole thing. Anyway, um, yeah, and then they talk about, you know, oh, can you install the nursery at the start? And she's like, oh, you know, you should probably do it at the end. And then she explains, and I have to admit, I had, I had never heard of this, but I can imagine, you know, this is, this might be a real bit of Jewish superstition that, the moment you make a nursery, it tells God you're happy and he doesn't like that. Then he's going to, you know, hurl a rock at the, the earth, you know. And, yeah, you know, the God of the Jews is vengeful. That is true. You know, if you, in, in biblical terms, they have the Old Testament. They don't have the New Testament, you know. So that's, yeah. And... Yeah, and, and, you know, it's like, oh, would you like to, to feel the belly? And she, like, leans her head directly on the belly and is, like, humming. And then she sees the spider, and she's about to, to hit it 
with this huge book and thankfully she stopped just wow and then at the the store I and let's see if okay so it one of them died recently I've been able to get the other and. one to work and nope that's no good <sighs> I really miss back when I could trust the thing to not screw up the audio so let's see if it works it does it will yeah thank goodness apologies for the echo now you know what I gotta live with every time I record these days um yeah so yeah so she goes to the the store to find the you know and and this is Stefan Sims uh, playing Harvey, you know, who, who runs this place, and, and she's like, what, what happened to, you know, where are the blues? And, yeah, you know, if you want the blues, ask a black person. Seriously, though, blues and music is fucking amazing. Um, but, yeah, and, you know, she ends up realizing, oh, no, wait, this, I am looking at the blues, and this is, you know, by the end of the movie, when she removes the implant, colors return. And yeah, and and you know, Dr. S calls and they talk side effects. And she says, Oh, you know, I'm I'm hot. Oh yeah, yeah, sure. Up the dosage, you know, take as much as you possibly can. And later we see her taking them, and it's like, I'm not sure she's still counting. I think she might be taking too many. Just thinking, just make it stop, kind of thing. Let's see. And yeah, she's you know she she opens the paint can. Suddenly she's got the uh, I don't I'm not 100% sure what it's called. Um, it's the it's the little metal thing to to spread the yeah. And you know various of the of the gynecology tools. She, she imagines as she's preparing the paint, and later we see what she painted. Let's see, and yeah, and and you know she tries to take the pills, but she ends up spitting them out and leaving without them, which is not great. And yeah, and and at Joseph's, you know she, yeah, there's the the grandfather clock and the the tall woman. Is her grandmother, you know, the the matriarch of the family, and we get the detail that, you know, you know, obviously she wasn't quite that tall. That's, you know, yeah. I I mean, that's she's a, a lurch and a half tall, so that's not, you know, but the fact that she was skinny was because she just got out of the the camp, you know. And Joseph, uh, you know, they have the, it's a, it's a trope, but Jewish guilt is apparently really strong. So he starts tearing up the pictures, uh, you know, in, in response to, to her seemingly rejecting the, the legacy. And, and yeah. And yeah, she realizes she forgot the pills, goes to Shauna. And then we see what she painted, all these spiders, you know, black, pitch black spiders. And, and like, she apparently broke the crib and the other thing died, which, uh, I don't know what. Okay, so I'm going to start by muting this thing so you don't get an echo. And I guess I'll just, uh, I'll just hope that it doesn't fuck up again so yeah the um let's see yeah you know she broke the crib and shauna is like you know i'm i'm due what was it like in a week or something where am i gonna put the baby as yeah and um yeah we learn that shauna is i did we know i i feel like we didn't know until now Shona was lesbian, and you know she says it's easy for you. You know you can just spread your legs. It's never going to be that easy for me. And I, it felt a 
little... The fact that it's only there. You know, they, they don't say it before or after. It felt a little like it was... You know, I'm, I don't I don't know um, Alexis Jack now's, you know, if if she is, you know, sapphic or, but the, the, yeah, it felt like it should probably have been at least a little bit more prominent or maybe not there at all, or at least just like mentioned offhand, but it kind of feels like in that scene it's basically being treated as if the yeah what's the word you know in that scene it feels like a big deal but it's not really mentioned before or since that you know I I think it would be I, I think it could have been in much more of the movie because that is something you know I'm I'm sure you know lesbian women who do want to have children you know it's it's much yeah you know it, it must feel very frustrating to them when they hear their straight female friends say that it's difficult for them and Shauna's water broke and Ella this is just it's one of the most disgusting things in the movie you know she she rubs on her face and licks it off the hand and I was, you know the moment I saw the water break I was like she's gonna lick it up she's gonna lick it up and that I do appreciate she didn't have to lick it up off the floor that would have been really you know I'm hoping that between her like rubbing it and and you know yeah picking it up off the floor and rubbing it on her face there was like a cut and what she picked up off the floor was washed off her hands and then like a makeup artist put something there that she could safely rub on her face without like it's, I really hope they didn't ask her to lick off her hand what she got off the floor but yeah let's see and yeah and we learned that you know and, and yeah understandably Shauna gets in I, I'm afraid I, I didn't catch the the name uh, wait, was that? There's a no. Yeah, I I'm I'm afraid I just didn't. Wait, was it, right? Fee, I think maybe was the yeah. You know, she she comes in and gets the. You know, yeah, just gets L out of there because that's not okay. Just yeah. And and yeah, Joseph calls and you know he he fell. And yeah, this was where I noted, okay, the, the Dr. S, you know, introducing herself and saying we're going to fix the, the clock. There's at least one or two too many of those. Uh, you know, and it's it's too bad because I, I don't think that... I don't think there's too many times where they needed something. I just wish it had been one of the other, audio, you know, audio hallucinations. And, yeah, and we see Ella just completely demolish the grandfather clock. And I appreciate Aiden reassures Elle, although doesn't, him, him seeming like a, like a good guy really does not last long after that. And, yeah, you know, he helps her rinse her hands, which, you know, at the time we think, oh, you know, like she, she cut herself whilst destroying the grandfather clock, but then we realize, oh, you know, for one thing, that might be Joseph's blood, and for another, you know, yeah, maybe she cut herself as she was, like, destroying, yeah, that was, that was disgusting, that was really effective horror, to, right, I should say, as I'm saying disgusting here, I'm not saying it was bad, I realize that if we're not talking horror, the word disgusting has a negative connotation, but it was effective horror, is what I'm saying. Let's see. But, but yeah, you know, him helping her rinse her hands leads into desire, and, you know, it's been two weeks. The longest it's been since, uh, you know, 
yeah, since they, they got married or, or something. And then apparently he cuts the tip on the implant, which, holy shit, that, yeah. I guess that one's for for the cis men watching who are like, oh, this is kind of funny. Holy shit! You know, just, yeah. And, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I think I already said, but yeah, I, I think it's because it hadn't been three weeks yet. And then we realize, you know, the the swag bag of hospital swag that he's got has the, the infinity like symbol on it from the, the clinical trial place. And yeah, he knew he made it happen. He sent her to a doctor claiming it was breast cancer, but it was because he wanted her to have kids, you know, and sadly, like there are really manipulative men the you know it's 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 obviously something that and i'm not speculating here i've i've heard you know it's something that women feel a lot of of fear you know trusting i really appreciate you know there's a lot of horror movies where you know a man like stabs a woman or something and you know there's a certain kind of horror to that but you'll note aiden never lays a hand on her he doesn't even, like, punch a wall out of frustration. The thing he does is, in a way, a much, you know, it's a, it's a psychological violation, not a, a physical, you know. He, he gets her to, to, you know, yeah, because he wants kids. And he doesn't, you know, he says, oh, but I'm not, I'm not pressuring you, you know, just, yeah. And, and, you know, and then he, you know, he says, I just wanted you to hear it from an objective source. And then she has an amazing line, which I think I might make my text review one-line summary. Well, aren't you a fucking hero? So, so yeah, that, Jesus Christ. But, but yeah, um, I'd like to think that I don't have any in my like friend group or family who would actually do that to the woman that they're with but yeah I've met men that I could see do that to you know yeah and you know yeah uh, L gets to the the right I want to, to very briefly say you know we learned that it was Aiden who called the cops and yeah you know he knew that she was headed to the clinic so he called the cops and said she would be at the clinic, you know, because, like, you know, if, if you didn't have that bit of context, it'd be like, why did they go to the clinic? How do they, how would they know? But he knew before, you know, yeah, so let's see. Yeah, and, you know, L goes to the, the front desk and, you know, says, so where, where's, where's Dr. S, you know? And and the woman there's like, ma'am, I can't. And and you know, L runs off. So, ma'am, I can't. Ah, oh, shit. Have you tried prune juice? And then she she learns the implant doesn't come out. Uh, you know, it, it's it's not meant to ever come out. And if you remove it, you'll never have kids. Let's see. And. Then we, uh, I don't know if maybe should the movie make a bigger thing out of, because, like, you could still adopt, you know, I, no, I mean, no, fair enough. It's a different kind of pressure. It's not quite the same. Now, the, the, yeah, and, you know, Let's see. Yeah, the Dr. S says it's it's a success. You know, you want to you want a baby. Uh, you know, and and she yes, um wants a baby more than anything, but she's scared she might be getting divorced. And Dr. S says you don't need a husband, just sperm, you know. I can set you up with an IVF specialist, uh, you know, and yeah, they they didn't have to put that in there, but I I appreciate this note of, you know, like you really, you really don't have to have a stable partner that, like, it's more important that, you know, it's more important for the kid that the parents are loving than that you necessarily have 
you know, one specific guy that you, you know, if, if you legitimately feel like you can't be with, uh, yeah. Right, wanted to briefly say, I appreciate that, like, they don't just like say, "Oh, you know, I I cut my dick." No, we get a a shot where we see the tip and and blood, and it's like, yowza, that yeah. So that's yeah, that's that's something you know. Every every straight guy watching that crossed his legs when when watching that scene. That's uh yeah. And and you know. Uh, L says, you know, it's it's not real. I was natural the way I was. And she removes the implant and color returns right away, which, you know, again, very on the nose, but but yeah. And you know, she she starts bleeding from down there, which I just wanted to briefly say I really appreciate that this is not one of those uh, horror movies that uh, like plays on like a pathological fear of uh, you know women like naturally bleeding like there's a lot of movies and and games and various media where like just the fact that you know a woman has you know menstrual bleeding uh, you know that's like treated as if that in and of itself is repulsive and it's Seriously, as as one straight cis guy talking to the rest of us, we gotta get over that. That's not like, yeah. Let's see, and you know, to to be clear, I'm not saying that women have to get over that. I 100% empathize with, you know, the the physical and emotional pain that. PMS comes with, and yeah, you know the the cops show up, and we learn, you know, Aiden calls Ella and explains, and and just yeah, holy shit, you know she she didn't destroy the grandfather clock. She got a hammer, hit him in the head until he died, and then like cut open like she wasn't removing like springs from the grandfather clock she was pulling out his intestine like jesus christ she she really just yeah very very yeah very very dark as as a you know and yeah and actually i hadn't even thought about it until right now but that really does mean that the entire you know she can't naturally procreate so the line dies with her and he's dead, and, you know, the fact that we haven't seen her mother, I forget if they mention it, but she must be dead also, that otherwise she would have spent time with, and obviously his parents are, are dead, given his age, there's almost no way that, and, and the fact that we haven't seen them, unless, was that who she was bringing food to in the monster? No, probably not. That was probably, yeah, because that was like a, um, there was like a system for that. She was assigned someone to bring food to. Anyway, um, yeah, the the family really will die out with uh, yeah. And you know, as we see, we we learn, you know, Joe, you know, he he fell on the on the floor and he saw his ancestors and he felt rejected because he wasn't accepting her, and then he you know then he does accept her and she feels you know yeah the the fact that she went through the clinical trial and now he's okay with her not having kids you know and it, it's one of those things you know it's not that women literally want to go through with killing you know one of their parents when the parent pushes them to, to have a baby, but it is like a an expression of that frustration and, and anger, you know, same way as, you know, the, the, uh, 
yeah, it's a spoiler, so I'll keep it vague. If you know, you know, the Babadook. It's not that people like that actually want to kill their loved one the way that, you know, it's that there's some strong anxiety and anger there. Not for all, but for some. And... Yeah, I, I really appreciate it. Again, you know, like, it seemed like the... the and it's, it's, you know, first it seems like, oh, you know, she couldn't hear what Joseph was saying because of the grandfather clock, so she destroyed it and he was upset about that. But in reality, she heard what he said and responded to it by killing him. So just, you know, the, the movie doesn't... There's only a few times where it shows what literally happened when, you know... We see what she hallucinates, and then we see what actually happened. We see it with the the tall woman on the, the road, which turns into the guy who needed help with his car. We see it with when she leaves the, the water tank. And then we see it here with, with Joseph. That's really the only times that we see both. You know, there's, there's other hallucinations, but that's the only time where we see, yeah, I guess also, right, also the, the nursery. And, yeah, you know, she gets handcuffed but manages to jump off the cliff but also seemingly survive, but, like, the, the end... No, I mean, that must basically be in her head because she's wearing handcuffs when she jumps and then we see her having landed and the handcuffs are nowhere to be seen, so... It must be one last hallucination. Maybe that's what goes through her head. And I found this... Uh, let's see. Apparently... Um, yeah, the, the... You know, the, obviously the, the fish is this, um, let's see, there we go. The fish is the one that they mentioned earlier, that the, um, you know, the fish that crawled out of the sea, and the, let's see, Yeah, you know, the the very first, you know, what led to, to human beings. And uh, right here, I found where it says, this is a, a critic review, this, uh, right, I completely forgot to mention how many, I'm, uh, you know what, I can, I can do that right now real quick. Um, yes, on the, there, there are 53 links in the IMDb external reviews section, 46 of them work. But but yeah, one of them, um, let's see, so the... Um, yeah, uh, right. Clock ends with Ella lying next to the lake and a fish crawling out of the water and squirming in front of her. We can assume that Ella died after jumping into the water. In, in her afterlife, she noticed the fish her father had mentioned when he had dreamed of his death. In his dream, the fish did not accept him, just like his, just, yeah, like his entire family line. Perhaps Ella was reminded of her father after what she had done to him. She was afraid that she would be rejected as well. The fish is also considered a symbol of fertility and abundance in Judaism, though the ones without scales and fins are considered abominations. In the end, when Ella wanted to become a mother, it was the result of a chemically induced treatment. The desire to become a mother did not come in the form of a blessing, blessing in her life, but rather a curse that destroyed her. And that is it for... Yeah, that brings us to the final section. Um, notes taken before watching. And, uh, yeah, I just have a couple of critic quotes here. I thought the movie was quite good most of the way. 
through, but the ending took a lot away from it, seemed tacked on with an added ambiguous bit for good measure. Yeah, I don't really agree with that, but anyway. The presentation of the psychological horror was kind of Lovecraftian in lack of explanation, a doctor playing with something she doesn't truly understand, creating these monsters in the process by breaking their minds, seeming totally oblivious to that fact. The actress was quite good. I like how they messed with the colors as things got more intense. It, remind, it kind of reminded me of Altered States 2. Um, so, so yeah, you know, basically the ending is the one part where you do have to, like, analyze on it, but, like, other than that, I would argue the, the metaphors are very clear, uh, you know, to, to the point where they literally explain what it is that she's, you know, I, I mean, the, the tall woman... You know, if she was sh she was first shown that picture, because it was from the photo album, she was first shown that picture when she was a child. And to a child, an adult can seem just impossibly tall. You know, you, you can't imagine ever being that tall, basically. And she was skinny because she came from one of the camps, you know, having thankfully survived. So, basically, she feels like it, you know, her, her grandmother represents the, the survival of the line. She survived the Holocaust, and now she's metaphorically screaming at Elle to continue the line and do it soon before she is unable to procreate, you know. And, right, back to critic quotes. At the end of uh, Clock, Jack Noss shows chooses a frame that's so ambiguous and yet incredibly symbolic. It's like she's saying that if you were given the opportunity to go back in time and stop the fish that crawled out of the sea, thereby preventing the advent of humankind, would you take it? Let's see. And... Yeah. Um... Okay, the yeah, that goes on to get very, very dark. Uh, I am not going to read that out loud in this video, but yeah, they um, it takes a turn. Uh, yeah, but the, the yeah, absolutely amazing movie. Really, really glad that I was able to watch it. I... Seriously, it's it's unreal to me. Like originally, I was just thinking, yeah, Disney Plus. You know, there's gonna be MCU stuff on it that doesn't come to theaters. It's the only way I can watch everything MCU, which, you know, that was a decision I made a long time ago. You know, many many years ago. I not quite 15 years ago, I don't think, but like, yeah, you know, I've I've never missed anything MCU. Um, not not anything official. I'm I'm working on catching up to the the TV stuff that isn't technically canon. But yeah, um, originally I was literally just thinking I'll do nothing other than than the MCU stuff that hits. And now I've watched like a dozen dozen and a half movies that I would not have been able to watch if I didn't have Disney Plus and. Yeah, I mean, I don't think I've been unhappy with anything I've watched on Disney Plus. Like, truly, like, felt like I didn't, I, I wish I hadn't done that. Just really, really glad to see horror in such a good place now. I, like, when I was a kid, I remember thinking, I guess the only good horror movies are the ones that have already been made. I'm never going to see a new good horror movie, you know, well, kid, a teenager. When I was a teenager, I was thinking these same thing about action movies. James Cameron movies, because there was a while where it looked like, I guess, the Avatar 1 will never come out. Uh, yeah, uh, let me hit me up in the comments. Let me know what is your favorite female-centric horror movie. Uh, I'll, I'll start you off with, you know, so Rob, obviously there's, there's this, there's The Babadook, Uh, let's see, Ready or Not, Barbarian, Fresh, and an argument could be made that the Night House is primarily about the female experience of, though, you know, it happens to both men and women that, you know, your partner dies and you have to deal with the complex emotions of it, but yeah. 
Um, yeah, if you like this video, please thumbs up, subscribe, hit that little bell. There should be a link to my main channel page, one, two more links to stuff like relevant playlists, a suggested video for you to watch on the screen right about now. I put out one vlog per week reviewing and sharing spoiled thoughts on a movie. I also do a weekly video talking about something animated Star Wars. I'm almost caught up. Uh, one talking about the most recent episode I've personally gotten around watching of The Bear. One for Screen Queens. I do a daily video where I talk about one or two episodes of the 1992 animated X-Men show. And uh, recently reviewed thoughts videos tend to come out very similar to this video. In other words, if you're more videos like this, you're in luck. You can check out my back account, which must catch me next week. I hope you enjoyed watching, as I enjoyed watching and recording, and I will catch you next time.